What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today we're going to be doing an updated kind of guide, uh, just a short guide, not nothing too crazy about the new and updated version of Zhongli. I just want to say up front that Zhongli now is just pff, ridiculous. Um, whereas before the, he had some ambiguity, I mean you weren't really sure as to how you should build him or what you should do with him. Now it's pretty clear cut and I want to talk to you guys about those changes and some simple adjustments that you guys can make to your build strategy um, that could really help you guys out. I do also want to talk to you guys about Hu Tao's spear, um, the new spear that's going to be up and coming because I think it's going to be really, really good for Zhongli. Um, and I also want to say up front that if you guys have Zhongli and you guys are looking to use Zhongli, um, I probably wouldn't waste my time getting the Jade Spear for Zhong uh, with Hu Tao's spear coming. I'm just throwing that out there, especially if you guys don't already have Vortex Vanquisher. I'll just go ahead and just hold on, save those intertwined fates um, for a weapon that is Zhong worthy um, that will be coming here in about a month. So, before, my preferred build with Zhong actually looked something like this. Uh, what I had opted to do before is I went with like a medium crit, you know, moderate crit damage. Um, but because I like to hit, to thwack things, I like to hit things, I had opted to go for a physical damage build, an attack percent timepiece, and a crit damage helmet. Now the reason why I went for this particular build, like I said, is because because I like to hit stuff and I like to see Zhongli's damage. It was also because I was running Vortex Vanquisher plus the Bolide set to, to get the extra damage, which allowed me to deal moderate damage, which was why a lot of people were like, D, well, you're, you're not complaining about Zhongli because you got R5 and all that other stuff. So what I want to do right now is I want to show you the damage on Zhongli using a weapon that doesn't add a bunch of extra stats, okay? And the best way to do that is to use a level 1 4-star weapon. So now that we got our 4-star weapon in hand, we're going to go ahead and head to Abyss 10. Now please pardon me, I haven't haven't done Abyss this rotation yet. I was just kind of saving it maybe for a stream. The effect that we're going to be using today is going to be the normal and charged attack damage plus 20%. And I want to show you guys what Zhang Li can do uh, by himself, level 1 spear. Uh, you guys saw his stats. Um, he's on a physical damage build, attack percent build, and crit damage helmet. And he only has about 20,000 HP. So the big thing here is with the improvements with Zhang Li is when I use his E, it pops a shield, right? Uh, and it also brings up a pillar. So what they did with the buff is they made it a lot easier to use Zhang Li. So now what I'm showing you guys is now that we broke through that with the level 1 spear, we're doing about what I was doing before in damage with our R5 Vortex Vanquisher minus, uh, you know, some 6k crits here and there. Um, so this is what it looks like with a level 1 spear running, you know, with, uh, you know, like I said, the gear that I showed you guys, bow like gear, it's all achievable, it's all attainable. Uh, there's nothing crazy here. This is a R1. We're getting 26k crits on his ult um, after the buff. So you guys can see that if all you did was get into level 90 and level up his talents a bit and utilize his abilities, this is what you guys can expect from Zhang Li. Uh, the shields stay up consistent. Uh, granted, my Zhang Li is C6, so he's getting a little bit of heals. Uh, small heals, though, because he only has 20,000 HP, so only about 100 HP a hit here. But the shield strength is still nice, especially, you know, with the buff to Zhang Li with the increased shield strength and all that other jazz. Not to mention that if he has his shield up and he's standing near enemies, he reduces their physical resistance and their uh, elemental resistance by 20%. So now that I showed you guys Favonius Lance, uh, R5 Favonius Lance, now I'll show you guys what you can do with Skyward Spine. So just a little bit more attack power available. Uh, still no attack boost. Uh, you know, I wanted to save Vortex Vanquisher for last, even though I still think that now with the Hutao's weapon coming, I don't think that Vortex Vanquisher uh, <laughs> might be the business for Zhang Li anymore. So same situation here, just the 20% attack and the 20% charged. And now we're going to go in here, do the same setup. We're going to go ahead and ult, and then we're just going to get these shields down real quick. And then so you guys can see the difference in damage. Okay. So now we have obviously a little bit more ramp up because we got a lot more attack power. The attack speed is a lot faster. Um, plus, obviously, the energy recharge is going to be a lot quicker too uh, due to the Skyward Spine. Um, so that big thing here, one of the things that I really like about Skyward Spine is just, just the subtle fact that um, it's it's just it's just nice. That extra energy recharge is so good, um, especially when you're in a situation using Zhang Li. Um, I've noticed that the extra HP damage uh, that they're giving him, 
you know, based on how much his max HP is, it was such a nice addition. Uh, not to mention just the overall buff and shield strength and everything that they gave him uh, made Zhang Li actually pretty crazy. Um, I was one of the few people that was actually satisfied with my Zhang Li before, um, but then I didn't realize like how much help actually Zhang Li actually needed until Gan Yu came out, and I realized how strong Gan Yu was, and then quickly realized that they had to buff Zhang Li because they couldn't release Gan Yu the way that she was without buffing Zhang Li. But now with the buff, you guys can see even with skyward spine like the damage numbers are okay uh nothing too crazy uh on the build and uh after this cut we'll show you guys uh what it looks like on the vortex vanquisher all right so now we're going vortex vanquisher this is really going to stack things up it's getting gonna give him a crazy ramp up attack it's gonna like you know while he has a shield present you know he, this is what's really going to get the numbers um this actually put my old build to shame um, I was saying, I was like, you know, how much difference could it actually make, right? Because when you look at the stats and they say like, oh, 2.4% or 1.3% or whatever of his HP added to his basic attack, like, I'm just like, eh, whatever, right? It's not that big of a deal, especially taking into consideration that my Zhongli only has 20,000 HP with his current build. I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal. However, uh, once we got into combat, uh, things got a little crazy pretty quickly. Right, because after we peel the shields back, um, and then we start actually dealing damage, uh, you guys can see like the damage actually starts to ramp up quite considerably, right? So now we're hitting uh, 7k uh, on the charge attacks. Uh, hold on, let's see if I, if I can get a good charge attack in here for you guys. Oh, no, bad angle. Uh, let me see if one more time. Okay, so that was a 16k charge attack there. And we're still with the ult on crit uh, dealing 62, you know, thousand damage. So, and this is, again, this is the same build that I've been running on my Zhang Li. Um, just, it hits substantially harder just due to the fact that he's reducing the resistance of the enemy. Plus, he's getting the percentage of his damage on top of everything he's dealing based on his max HP. Now, you guys might be like, okay, D, that's cool and all. Uh, but what if we don't have your gear? Like, what's the benefit of the changes to Zhang Li? And that's what we're going to talk about next. So the benefit to now the changes with Zhang Li is it gives you a lot more flexibility in how you build your character. The reason I say that is because before you're either going all the way pew pew hit stuff or you're going full HP build. There's not really nothing really in the middle, right? And if you're going with the full HP build, you're pretty much locked into building Zhang Li on like a Noblesse plus a Geo combo. So you can maximize the ult spam, use them as an ult spam bot, and that's pretty much it. Or if you're using them as a physical damage build to hit stuff and pew pew, you know, that way, then that's it. But what this does, especially with the buff, now that he gets extra damage on top of his build with his HP, it allows you a lot more flexibility in terms of what you can do. Because in the example that I'm going to show you guys here is we're going to switch this physical bonus damage cup over to an HP cup. As you guys can see here, still focusing crit rate, crit damage, obviously energy recharge, attack percent, all that good jazz. So physical damage gone. Then I'm going to take his attack percent time piece out and we're going to switch this for an HP piece as well. So in this situation now, the difference is we're running two HP pieces, okay? And then we're also going to be running crit damage, same setup, same build, and I want to show you guys something. So now the difference is, is now we have 34,000 HP. And what does that mean for you? Well, what that means is that now you have the opportunity to get your Zhongli with a lot more HP, and you don't have to sacrifice as much damage, right? So we're here. Uh, granted, our basics have dropped pretty considerably, but we're still hitting, you know, 5K, 3K, 4K, you know, 4, 4K, 5K damage um, while still having almost 20,000 more HP. You're like, you guys might be like, well, that's cool and all, but his basic attack damage is still kind of pee pee. And I get that. But what this does is this puts you in a situation where you can still deal damage. He just did a 65k crit there. Um, you can still deal considerable damage while getting a lot more stability from your Zhongli. Because the thing with Zhongli is now, especially for those of you guys who have C6, he can heal a little bit more. Nothing too monumental, right? But if you got, but even if you guys don't have C6 Zhongli, the benefit is the more HP Zhongli has, the stronger his shield is going to be. And then when his shield is stronger, it's going to allow you to keep your team alive longer. So for those of you guys out there who are utilizing Xiao, maybe and you're thinking about putting your Xiao with your Zhongli, this is going to allow your team to stay alive so much longer and have a lot more stability and support kind of like setting a baseline for your team so you don't really have to worry about too much uh, you just keep popping the Zhongli shield keeping your team up and then while he can still deal his whole damage
damage. He can have a considerably higher base amount of HP, which can allow him to do what he needs to do while still dealing a decent amount of damage. So the question really is, what do you want to use your Zhongli for? You know, I still think he has versatility. We Again, I wanted to show you guys different builds. So if you guys wanted to rock with like a physical damage crit build, you definitely guys definitely, definitely, definitely can go with something like that. Um, or if you wanted to go with like a full HP build, like a triple HP, uh, just for pure shield strength, you definitely could do something like that. Or if you're looking for more ult damage, you can go with like two piece Geo, two piece Noblesse. You could run like HP crit damage, right? Like a HP, HP crit damage. Or you could run like a HP Geo bonus damage crit damage build, uh, or you could run two HP percent pieces and Geo bonus damage. Um, this just opens up a lot in terms of what you can do because now you get to have your cake and eat it too. You can have your super tanky Zhongli and still deal damage. And the reason why I said you might not want to try to get, uh, you know, the 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 Shao spear for Zhongli is because Hu Tao spear, uh, even if part of the the spear passive isn't going to apply most of the time to Zhongli. Um, the extra 40% HP or 20 to 40% HP, depending on what refinement you guys go to, will actually make a significant uh, difference in terms of how Zhongli performs. To be quite frank, I think that the Zhongli buff really was very, very, very significant. And uh, I think this will make Zhongli a lot easier for a lot of people to use, no matter what stage they are in the game. But in terms of that, guys, Nothing really too crazy here. Um, it just really opened up the scope as to what you can do with Zhongli. Made it a lot easier for him to build. And due to the fact that when he has a shield up, he reduces the resistance of the enemies now. It makes it a lot easier for your teams overall to deal as much damage as possible. I'm personally really excited. Um, I'm pretty much planning every single team that I have around using Zhongli now at this point. Uh, especially with the Geo bonus buff. It's it's literally just it's it's nuts. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about some of the changes that were made to Zhongli over the course of this buff and this update. Um, so if you guys happen to have Zhongli or if you guys were on the fence about building Zhongli because you didn't think that he would perform, I would probably put those concerns behind you and put this guy to work because, yeah, he's doing big things. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, this is your boy, Damone, and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Ну, заяц. Уходи.